So welcome to Narasha Technologies. My name is Mahesh. I'm taking Java and Android Technologies training in Narasha IT. Okay. Uh, in my previous videos, uh, I explained what is Android uh, and what are the features of Android. Then after that, I explained what are the Android components. Then after that, we discussed Narasha IT Android content we discussed in, the, in my previous videos. Okay. So in this video, so I'll explain you. So how to configure the environment by using Android Studio and what is the directory structure of Android Studio project we'll discuss. Okay. So initially, there is no any official ID for developing the Android applications. That's why Android is taking a support of Eclipse for developing the applications. Now, Android is given an official ID for developing the applications. That is Android Studio. So the recommended ID for developing the Android applications is what Android Studio. Okay. So just type in Google like Android Studio. So this is a you'll get this Android Studio homepage. You'll get download download page you'll get and here you can find the option called download android studio okay so based on the operating system what you are using automatically you are going to get that link you are going to get i'm using mac i'm using so that's why i got the link download android studio for mac okay so download that android studio software and uh, it's not you know it's not complex to configure and all just you'll get a dot exe file in case of windows or dot dmg file in case of mac okay so download the installation file and uh, just click on next, 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 like other softwares, and finally you are going to get a finish button. Okay. Okay. After installing Android Studio, you are going to get Android Studio icon in the start menu. Okay. Let's start Android Studio. So this this is an initial screen, a welcome screen. So here you can find few options like if you want, you can create a new project, you can create new Android Studio project, or if you want, you can you can open any existing project, you can open and you can open. You can import the Eclipse based project or ADT by using ADT bundle. If any project is developed by using Eclipse or ADT bundle, you can import that project, you can import into Android Studio. So by using this import project from Eclipse or ADT or if you are using any version controls like SVN, Git. So you can use, you can choose this project from check, check our project from a version control or Git. Okay. And uh, in, import Android code sample. Already Android is giving some samples along with the SDK. So if you want to get any samples, if you want to get Android samples, just click on that Android samples. So here you can find some uh, example sample products you can find. You can take any like for example, uh, you need a sample for a recycler view. So here there is an example for recycler view project. And you can take the product, you can download that, you can import that project and you can see that sample product you can see. Okay. Let's see here, we'll create our first Hello World project. I'm creating a new product I'm creating. Let's start a new Android Studio project. So he's asking what is the application name? Okay, let's take my application name is so hello NIT is a project name. Hello NIT is my project name or application name. And the next one is asking the company domain name. So I specified QX out, I specified the domain name. Okay. So based on the application name and package name, what you specified. Remember one thing, it's important. Packages concept which is used to avoid the naming conflicts in Java. Okay, I'll repeat. In Java, there is a concept called packages, which is used to avoid the naming conflicts. Okay, so here, why the package name for application? Why the package name for application is? See, uh, there are some lakhs of applications are available in Play Store, and day by day, some thousands of applications are posting into Play Store. So maybe you know there may be a chance of conflicts in the applications. Definitely, you are going to get some conflicts with the applications. To avoid the conflicts, to avoid the conflicts between the applications, so they given, if you want to deploy any application, if you want to deploy into Play Store, the package name should be what? Unique. Meaning, if you try to upload this APK file into Play Store, first it is going to check this package name, cubexsoft.hello.nit. If any application is already available with this package name, hello NIT, cubexsoft.hello.nit, then it will not allow the application. Okay, so Google Play will reject that one, and you have to uh, re you have to rename the package name, and you have to deploy. Okay, just remember the package name should be the unique identifier for your application. Then you can ask me like uh, how I know that whether this package name is available or not. Okay, so later also you can check, and I mean you can proceed with this you can proceed with this package name initially, and if you try to de deploy into Play Store at that time, it will show you whether this package name is already available or not. Later also you can modify this package name, you can modify later. Okay. And if you are working with any 
uh, if you are taking any native library support then use this uh, include C++ support also. And the next one thing, next thing is project location meaning this application hello NIT project where, where it is creating the location it is it is showing the location it is showing okay. Next we discussed in the initial classes Android is a platform okay. So, a platform for phone and tablet Android wearable devices TVs next Android automobiles and Android glass. So, you are developing an application for what you are developing an application for wear or TV or Android auto or glass ok. So, initially let us take we are focusing on phone and tablet ok. Let us take this phone and tablet next after selecting this platform see here it is asking the minimum SDK the minimum SDK is Android 4.0.3. What is this minimum SDK and why we have to configure this minimum SDK? See, for example, I am creating an application I am creating uh, in Android. I will tell you, uh, I mean, where exactly I got a requirement of specifying this minimum SDK version. Let us take in my project, I am working with uh, different medical devices uh, by using a Bluetooth. By using Bluetooth, I am connecting with different medical devices I am connecting, okay. In Android, they introduced a concept called BLE. So, a Bluetooth is different and BLE is different. So, BLE is termed as Bluetooth low energy. To communicate with the medical devices, to communicate with those devices, hardware devices, so we have to use a Bluetooth concept, I mean BLE, Bluetooth, Bluetooth low energy. This BLE concept is introduced from Android 4.3. This BLE is introduced from Android 4.3 version onwards, this BLE concept is introduced. So, in my application, I have to provide a restriction that if any user is using a lower than 4.3 version, then I should not allow the user to install the application. Because my in my application, I am communicating with different devices by using BLE, that BLE support is not there in Android 4.3 and lower versions. So, I want to provide the restriction if any user is using Android 4.3 and above version, so then only the user will install my application. So, I want to provide that restriction I want to provide to my users ok. So, how can I pro how can I provide that restriction? Because if any if any 4.3 lower version devices install the application, the application will not work ok. So, unnecessarily you had to get some negative feedback you had to get from the customer. So, so it is not a coding problem it is a it is Android version lower version. So, we had to clearly we had to show this information to the user while installation time only was you are using Android 4.3. Android 4.3 lower version. So, this application will not support. Like if you want to provide that restriction, if you want to provide, if you are using any specific Android features which are available from a specific version, then specify that minimum SDK version here. So, I specified Android 4.0.3 is a minimum is a minimum version and it is showing the percentage also. If you specify this 4.0.3 version and 97.4 percent of the devices, Android devices will support ok. So, we are using a, a, my requirement is initial requirement just I want to print a message like hello hello world. So, I am not using any device specific features let us proceed with this Android 4.0.3 initially ok. So, click on this next just in the previous in the previous video only I explained about Android components I explained. The initial component in the Android is nothing but activity just I will recall again activity means a single screen in the application with UI components a single screen in the application with UI components, user will interact with the device through activity. Each and every screen, each and every screen in Android is called as one activity. Uh, basically, I told you we will learn in this activity component how to design the screens with the different UI components. Here it is showing some activity templates while you are creating the project because it is mandatory if you are creating a project it has it has to contain at least one screen it has to contain what at least one screen. Here it is showing some screen templates like you want to create a blank activity with a floating action button. So, it is a floating, floating action button and you want to create an empty activity, you want to create a login kind of activity, you want to create a maps kind of activity, what kind of activity you want to create, a screen you want to create based on that you had to create the template you had to select here. So, initially my requirement is let us take I want to display a message I want to display on the screen called welcome, well, hello world. So, choose an option called empty activity. 
or even you can select this add no activity also okay then programmatically we will create how to create that activity programmatically you can choose empty activity you can choose or you can choose what add no activity also let us take I am selecting empty activity you will get one another important thing is activity each and every screen is called as one activity technically in case of android activity in case of android activity for each and every activity i mean for each and every screen we have to create two files we have to create for each and every screen the two files are nothing but one is the xml file and one more thing is java file for each and every activity we have to create what one xml file we have to create for each and every screen and we have to create a java file we have to create for each and every screen okay so for e technically each and every screen is termed as what one activity for each and every activity i mean screen we had to create one xml file to create and one java file we had to create why we had to create one xml file and java file is let's say assume you have a simple login screen here i'm creating this login screen i'm creating let's say i'm creating a username and password username password and i'm creating a button called login button username password and I am creating a button called what login button I am creating a simple login screen this screen designing you can do in XML the screen designing you can do what in XML you can do you can do this screen designing like created two buttons text boxes and creating a button this UI design we can do in XML but whenever user clicks a login button let us take my requirement is when user clicks a login button I want to perform some action I want to perform. Let us take store these details into database. Store these details into what? Into database I want to store the details. This is a requirement. This login screen design we can do in XML we can do this design screen designing this login screen. But whenever user clicks a login button my requirement is I want to store this login details I want to store into database I want to store. When user clicks a login, I want to store into database. So, that action we cannot perform by using XML. XML is only for designing the UI. If you want to configure any events, if you want to configure to the UI components, so we have to configure by using Java, we have to configure. Okay, that is why it is mandatory for each and every screen. For each and every uh, screen, we have to create XML, we have to create, and a Java, we have to create. This is one reason. Okay to configure the events to the UI components, we require the Java file and one more thing is to maintain the activity lifecycle also, we require this Java file. Okay, let us see what exactly activity lifecycle in the coming videos. Okay, I hope you got the clarity about this activity and one more thing, technically, technically this XML file is called as layout, this technique, this XML file is called as what? It is called as a layout and Java file is called as activity. This is called as a layout, is called as what? A layout. XML file is called as a layout and Java file is called as activity. XML file is called as layout, Java file is called as what? Activity technically. Okay. Okay. So we understand that what exactly activity means. And here I am selecting what? Empty activity I am selecting. I want to create an empty screen I want to create. And see here, I told you right, for each and every screen it is creating an XML file it is creating. XML file name is activity underscore main is the XML file name and Java file name is what main activity is the Java file name. Okay. So click on finish. So the project is created. A project is created in Android Studio. Uh, still it is loading here. You can find the status you can find in the bottom. So now the Android a project is created. Okay. So I told you right for each and every screen when XML file and Java file are created and by default we got an XML file we got and by default we got a Java file also we got by default. This is XML code and this is a, a Java code. Okay. And before going to start writing this XML code or the Java code, first you have to understand the directory structure you have to understand. Like if you create a project, if you create, we got some lot of directories we got like one is app we got, app, manifest, Java, resource, gradle, like we got lot of files we got a lot of files and folders we got. So, before going to jump into the programming part, okay. So, first we will discuss what exactly these folders, like why we require this uh, manifest, why we require this Java folder, why we require this resource folder, what is mean by Gradle file. So, all these things we will discuss in the next video, okay. 
So, in the next video I will explain about the directory structure of Android application I will explain, okay. So, thank you. Thank you.